when your spindle is full, this one isn't, but we're going to pretend, and you're ready to take your yarn off, maybe you want a larger ball of yarn than you can get on one full spindle, or even maybe two full spindles. Maybe you'd like five or six hundred yards of yarn in one piece. What you can do is what I call spinning on. wind this on a little bit more. This is a ball winder and I've taken some blue yarn off another spindle and I've used a toilet paper or a paper towel tube for the center so that it won't collapse and I can take it on and off. This is what I call spinning on. I'm going to join the yarn on this spindle to the yarn on this ball, or it could be the yarn on any other ball. I need to put this down on the floor <coughs> so it will feed up like my fiber source. I could put it on the table, but then you can't see it. I'm going to overlap, and you'll notice I have quite a bit of unspun fiber here and I'm just going to spin that on to my big blue ball. Spinning on. You can do it um, as many times as you want. It's really a great way to take the little bit of yarn off each spindle and make a long, long skein. If you're spinning thick yarn, or socks or mittens that you don't want to ply, again by spinning on you can have a continuous skein to knit with or crochet with. Another way to make a nice ball is to have, this is a little felt ball, you can use a tennis ball, and wrap the yarn on there. I'm going to hold the spindle between, you can hold it between your knees or between your feet, and simply wind the yarn around the ball. There again, when this ball, I can, I can make a huge ball out of this simply by spinning on. So if you would spin on four or five spindles full of yarn onto each little ball, you'd have a lot of yarn to ply in a continuous skein. There are different ways to ply your yarn. This is a center pull ball of singles. When I talk about singles, I'm talking about one strand of hand spun yarn. I'm going to ply or spin two of them together to make a two ply yarn. When I was spinning, I was spinning Z, so I was rolling the spindle up my thigh. Now I'm going to roll it down my thigh in an S direction. I'm going to help myself get started with a loop in my leader. Then I'm going to put the yarn, both ends of the yarn from the center pull ball, one from the center, one from the outside. I'm going to layer it back through the loop to help me get started spinning. I'm going to roll down my leg and as the twist comes up the yarn will begin to ply. You can see the two ply yarn. And now when I wind it on, I'm going to wind it on in a counterclockwise wet way because that's the way I'm spinning or plying my yarn. You can also add a lot of twist, park, and ply. It's important to keep tension on the yarn while you're plying so that one strand doesn't wrap around the other. It's also important to Keep tension on the yarn as you wind it on. See how I'm, again, it's the pinch. 
and draft. You don't have to put a lot of twists. You don't have to over twist your ply any more than you had to over twist your initial yarn. Wind it on and repeat. That's one way to ply. This is a little gizmo that a friend gave me. It's supposed to hold two yarns for plying. I've never had very good luck with it because the yarns tend to wrap around the gizmo instead of plying. I'm going to try holding it between my knee and see what happens. I'm plying a blue and white yarn together. I want to use these yarns, this yarn, to make socks. Now I'm plying on a great big spindle, which will allow me to ply a lot more yarn than the small spindle. You can definitely see the plying when I'm using the two colors. Again, wind it on in a counterclockwise motion. And you don't need to put a ton of twist in your plied yarn. You do need to wind your cop on carefully because in order to unwind this yarn, you're going to pull it off the cop. I can also remove these balls and simply set them on the floor and ply with them that way. I think that would probably be a little easier, at least for me. I don't feel comfortable holding this in my knees. I could take my little felt balls and put those in a can and ply from those just by pulling it off. The important thing is to keep an even tension on the yarn as you're drafting it out. If you don't, one yarn will spiral around the other and you'll have a designer yarn, but not an evenly plied yarn. There's not a lot to plying. I'm going to pretend my spindle is full and I want to ply on to another skein. I'll use this yarn wrapped on the ball as my other skein and we're going to pretend this is a nice big ball of yarn. What I've done, and plying on is not as satisfactory as spinning on. I've broken one of the strands so that I have a good four or five inches of yarn left. On my spindle I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to break off one of the strands not quite as far. Now I'm going to drop my ball on the floor. I'm going to overlap my singles thread, my single yarn, and hold it right at the end. Give it a good twist. Let the twist come up. I'm going to park this so you can see what I'm doing. See how I'm letting the twist come in? Now I've reached the ply on the ball and my yarn has been joined.